Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, January 9th, 2024, let's get into it. I was going to say, watching the United States burn, watching the United States, <laughs> but let's not change the theme of the video. So uh, the first story, well, actually, let's, let's get something to help you. Uh, Redacted did another video on SASKF, SASKF, that's a mining company out of Canada. Take a look at it. I think it's worth a look. I put in a bid for another uh, 500 shares at 85 cents. Didn't pick it up today, so it must have gone up. But stock market's going to crash, so eventually I'll pick it up. All right, so let's get into the biggest story of the day. And this is the, uh, I think it's the German farmers descending on uh, Berlin. Uh, the Germans may have finally found a backbone. <laughs> Oh my God, they're actually protesting their idiot government. I mean, the only worst government in the world, well, I mean, I, I guess you could put Germany and the United States on par. I mean, when you look at Joe Biden, who's just a meat puppet uh, and the stuff that comes out of the United States. So, uh, and then, of course, you got Germany. Uh, they, they, uh, they got the second worst government maybe in the world. Uh, so they're actually protesting and man, it is brutal cold there. Oh my God! This and it's come down through Ukraine. Ukraine, uh, I can give it. This is this is Russian fighting weather. This is this is when the Russians perform their best. It's like 20 degrees below zero or some kind of crazy stuff. Germany is suffering, but the the thing that blew my mind was uh, redacted. Uh, Clayton went there and he was interviewing all of the Germans, and they were talking about we need a new government. We want a new government, but not one of them mentioned the Nord Stream pipeline, which that's the, the cause of all their suffering. And so I was very shocked that, that none of the people in the interview, and then I was going to complain that Redacted, because they did, you know, the first part of Redacted today, uh, they, they talked about uh, Germany and the protests. Of course, Clayton's over there doing interviews. And then finally, they did mention the Nord Stream Pipeline. Let's, let's get back to what happened to the Nord Stream Pipeline. Let's watch a video on that. Thanks to the Nord Stream pipeline attacks, 2023 was the year when the masks finally dropped. The year started with the shocking revelations of world-renowned investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch. According to his inside sources, it was Washington that blew up the Nord Stream gas pipelines. As long as Europe remained dependent on the pipelines for cheap natural gas, Washington was afraid that countries like Germany would be reluctant to supply Ukraine with the money and weapons it needed to defeat Russia. It was at this unsettled moment that Biden authorized Jake Sullivan to bring together an interagency group to come up with a plan. All options were to be on the table, but only one would emerge. Sima Hirsch explains everything in great detail, as well as how it was executed under the guise of the annual NATO exercises held in the vicinity of the explosions a few months earlier. For the public, it was the traditional drills where participating nations could exercise a myriad of capabilities that demonstrate the inherent flexibility of maritime forces, including mine clearance operations, explosive ordnance disposal, and diving and salvage operations, or the perfect smoke screen to plant a few bombs they could then detonate remotely with Norway's help. On September 26, 2022, a Norwegian Navy P-8 surveillance plane made a seemingly routine flight and dropped a sonar buoy. The signal spread underwater, initially to Nord Stream 2 and then onto Nord Stream 1. A few hours later, the high-powered C4 explosives were triggered and three of the four pipelines were put out of commission. Within a few minutes, pools of methane gas that remained in the shuttered pipelines could be seen spreading on the water's surface and the world learned that something irreversible had taken place. So the man who won a Pulitzer Prize for not only exposing the My Lai Massacre, but its cover-up during the Vietnam War was now blowing the whistle on the US government once again. All nonsense, according to the White House. This is utterly false and complete fiction. These blasts did not occur on U.S. soil. I would leave it to uh, our partners on whose territory, on whose um, uh, soil, as it were, uh, these blasts occurred to speak to uh, the appropriate investigative mechanism. Well, they also claim to know nothing. There have been three separate investigations into the attack carried out by Germany, Sweden and Denmark. They all concluded that it was an act of sabotage. But as for who did it, crickets. 
Then it was Donald Trump's turn to deliver a bombshell that was during an interview with Tucker Carlson, where he said that it was Washington indeed behind the explosions. Who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline? Um, I don't want to get our country in trouble, so I won't answer it. But uh, I can tell you who it wasn't was Russia. Yeah. How about when they blamed Russia? You know, they said Russia blew up their own pipeline. You got a kick out of that one too. It wasn't Russia. Uh, so I won't answer the question only because I don't want to get our country yeah. any deeper than they already are. But it sort of all starts. We have, you know, we have the most incredible equipment. I rebuilt our whole military. We have things that are. You can do anything. A fifth grader could tell you that it wouldn't make sense for Russia to blow up its own pipelines, especially since it would give the United States a huge advantage, something they admitted right after the attacks. Well, I, I couldn't play you the whole thing. It's just way too long. I get my video way too long. But I hope that brings back your memory on what took place with the Nord Stream pipeline. Now, the video went on to all of the other crazy stories. I won't even show you those because I don't give them any merit that the Ukrainians blew it up or it was Gilligan, the skipper, and uh, Marianne on a, on, a, on a yacht that blew up, you know, went out there and blew up the Nord Stream. <laughs> I won't even get into all the crazy stories. Uh, this is kind of kind of be a long video, and I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's just gotten there was just way too much news. So the the, the first thing was um, there was a uh, Ukrainian, I think it was a Ukrainian official, and I couldn't give you his name. I couldn't get it, but he said that well, he admitted that 30,000 Ukrainians are dying each month at the front lines, and that was a hell of an admission. Um, so I I thought that was uh, uh, an amazing admission. It says. Oh, and then we got Petraeus. <laughs> Does anybody listen? I mean, we have the worst Pentagon, the worst generals. I mean, Austin, Petraeus, uh, what, what the hell is the other guy's name? Uh, oh, ben Hodges, that's it. Lieutenant General Ben. Who in the hell is listening to these stupid people? My God, for them to achieve the rank that they did, it just tells you our military is screwed up here in the United States. But anyway, Petraeus was going on about how Ukraine needs to join NATO and the EU. Uh, it says Russia is, is going to march across Europe <laughs> with what? I mean, they've only got, well, maybe a million men under arms. That's not enough to take Europe. I mean, hell, they're having a tough time taking Ukraine. And Well, Ukraine's going to be surrendering here soon. That's just my opinion. Uh, and then he, he says, uh, well, I, I, this is my note. I said the sanctions have failed, but Kirby says it has contained the Russian missile production. <laughs> what? Have you been watching the war at all? The Russians have launched at least five huge, you know, 100 missile salvos against Ukraine. And by the way, the damage that those missiles are doing are coming in now. Uh, they've taken out uh, some of the um, uh, power structure. So right now, Ukrainians uh, are going to freeze to death. Uh, they don't have any electricity. In, in quite a few places. Uh, there was one that it showed a, that maybe a train track had been hit. I don't think that was. I think it was probably a missile that went off off court, course. Uh, they've taken out uh, all kinds of uh, uh, ammo dumps, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing facilities. And yet, uh, this idiot says that, you know, that they're running out of missiles. <laughs> how many times have we heard that? How many, how stupid are the American people to believe this stuff? I guess they will. Of course, if they all they watch is mainstream news or CNN. Uh, so then, um, well, we got, uh, and, and this is another thing he was talking about, was how Putin, you know, still might be overthrown. Hey, Putin's got an 80% approval rating. What the hell is he talking about? Can anybody believe Lincoln Blinken or these idiots in the Biden administration? I mean, I just, I don't know. Another statistic that I got today was uh, it's going to take 75 months to refill the strategic oil reserve. Now, why is that significant? It's because we've given most of our weapons to Ukraine. And, and of course, without the strategic oil reserve, that, that kind of just grounds our Navy. Uh, they can't sail per, to perhaps to places that they need to go. Uh, because if, if you want to know the number one and number two uh, uses of, of oil in the world, it's, uh, it's private jets uh, by Bill Gates and <laughs> all, of, all of the elite flying all, or John Kerry flying all over the world. Uh, and, of course, it's your, your ships. 
uh, in the in the fleet, and of course the the U.S. Air Force. I mean, my God, the amount of fuel that they burn, and of course you you got your domestic flights. So that's where all your fuel goes. It's not cars. It's not the the people of the world that are burning all the oil. It's the damn elites. Uh, God dang, I can't, can't believe people are this dumb. So and that's and that was another thing is our patriots are gone. We got nothing left in stock for patriots. So if somebody launches missiles at the United States, do you think we have an air defense left here in the United States? Not much. Not much, and it'd be depleted pretty damn quick. Uh, if you want to study Iran, that's where they put all their money is in the missiles. They got hundreds of thousands of missiles. I mean, I, you know, if, if they launch on Israel, Israel will cease to exist. And that's the route that Iran went rather than nuclear weapons. And I think it was a wise, wise course because think about it. Conventionally, you can always escalate conventionally. Once somebody uses a nuke, which I'm hoping the United States does not, because they're going to get desperate in Ukraine, uh, that's that's going to be that's going to be the beginning of the end. Well, with millennials, uh, they don't want to join the military, <laughs> so the military is hurting. So what the latest is that the illegal aliens are going to be drafted into the military, and I've talked about how that's going to be a disaster because they're not going to hesitate to kill you and me uh, once the Congress and the and the Biden administration and the Democrats get desperate, the warmongering Democrats, the bloodthirsty Democrats, when they get desperate, they're going to turn the military on you and me. And uh, with the illegal aliens, they're not going to care. You're not their mother. You're not their father. You're not their brother or their sister. They're just there to kill you. All right, so let's just keep going. All right. The logistics. This is another problem because uh, right now, um, well, Iraq, I mean, they're pissed off, man. We killed uh, one of their generals. Uh, he was in the militia, but that's part of the that's considered part of the Iraqi military. And uh, when we killed him, uh, basically that gave uh, gave them to, to to launch in on our bases. How do you think the logistics? How are we going to rearm all these uh, hundred and you know seven hundred bases we have around the world? Uh, we've had to pull out the the Ford because uh, our fleets are vulnerable down there in the Red Sea. Oh my goodness, let's just keep going. So I. Uh, on well, North Korea, I mean, they're they're getting pretty uh, threatening now. I, I I feel like a war in Korea could kick off at any time. What better time could it be? You got the U.S. bogged down in the Middle East. We've depleted all our weapons in Ukraine. We're we're threatened in China. I think, man, if North Korea ever wants to 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 uh, do anything, now is the time. Saudi Arabia. Oh yeah, this this was getting to the BRICS. There was a huge uh, special on the BRICS. Today and I uh, think as of January first, uh, I got I finally got the list. Oh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Iran, Ethiopia. Uh, they joined uh, Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa in the BRICS. So what does that mean for the U.S. dollar? Ah, uh, it's it's going down fast, and they're going to meet in October of this year, probably in in. Uh, Russia, by the way, took over the uh, the lead of the BRICS. You know, it's kind of like in the UN. You rotate the uh, leader from various countries. Well, Russia is now heading up the BRICS, and they said they're very receptive because Brazil wants a new currency. It's not anybody. Brazil is the, the, the most vocal country, you know, supposedly a semi-ally of the United States, not. Uh, they're the ones promoting a new currency, and Russia says they're going to be very receptive to that in October. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, that's being warmly embraced by Moscow. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so the move away from the U.S. dollar continues rapidly. We've got 30 more countries that want to join BRICS. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And let's look at the BRICS countries. BRICS Plus, now BRICS Plus, as of January 1st, represents 3.5 billion people, or 45% of the world's population. Uh, BRICS produces 44% of the world's oil. So don't tell me that uh, the BRICS is not coming along. And then you've got countries like France. France completed, uh, well, we talked about this in previous video. They completed their natural gas transactions in one, two big transactions. I imagine that trend's going to continue. And then we've got China buying record amounts of gold. Now, what do you think that China's buying record amounts of gold for, huh? I'm just, just throwing it out there, just throwing it out there. Uh, so the 1974 petrodollar is dying. It's dying around the world, and we're going to see hyperinflation here in the United States. And once the dollar dies, if they bring in the central bank digital currency uh, uh, and they can monitor your transactions, I imagine every MAGA 
a person across the country is going to lose their bank account. Uh, they're going to allow. They're not going to allow us to uh, use the banking system. Uh, so I hope you got some silver and gold, and you got the ability to barter. Now I'm not good at the ability to barter, but I do have a little bit on the side of silver and gold. Let's see. Let's keep. Oh, China. I found this very interesting. China is Saudi Arabia's biggest trading partner. Who knew? I didn't know that uh, Saudi Arabia was BRICS' uh, largest trading partner. And, uh, and BRICS, uh, just for an FYI, has been around for 17 years. So this isn't, this isn't a fledgling organization. It's been around for a long time. They've been working on this infrastructure. But now, now the time is ripe. Now that we have sanctions everywhere, we've got the, uh, if they steal the Russians' money, the whole world sees the writing on the wall. They want to get the hell away from the U.S. dollar, and who can blame them? I would want to get away from it. So uh, we already talked about Russia's attacking the power. Ah, uh, this is an interesting one, and we're going to watch a video on this. So the International Court of Justice. I, have you ever heard of that? <laughs> I've never heard of it. Yeah, I've heard of the International Criminal Court, which the United States, Russia, and uh, I think Iran and some other nations don't even... They don't even, you know, it, it, nobody says that they're legit. You know, that, that the International Criminal Court is just a bunch of blowhards that exist uh, for, for the UN to make them feel better. But this uh, International Court of Justice, that's recognized by everybody at the UN, including the United States. And South Africa, of all nations, has brought a case to the uh, International Court of Justice, and that's going to go on uh, this Thursday. And as a result, uh, it looks like uh, the Israeli genocide in Gaza is scaling back just a little bit. Because Austin was just there. I wonder what they discussed. Maybe Austin was saying, you know, we got this court case coming up in the International Justice Court. Uh, maybe you need to quit exterminating the uh, Palestinians. Uh, let's, uh, let's watch a video on the extermination of the Palestinians. A new massacre was perpetrated by the Israeli occupation against the Abu Alba family in the northern Gaza Strip. The four-story house was targeted with explosives, resulting in over 80 fatalities and numerous injuries. I am currently amidst a pile of bodies and debris in this house, while rescue teams struggle to save lives under challenging conditions and limited resources. Of the more than 10 families residing in this house, which was bombed by occupation aircraft yesterday, dozens of martyrs remain under the rubble. Civil defense teams are working for the second day straight to recover victims. Late last night, we managed to rescue several injured individuals and transport them to medical points in the north. The occupation's massacres have persisted for over 90 days in this brutal war. Yesterday's horrific slaughter of the Abu Alba family continues. Severed limbs, a building of over five floors, more than ten families residing in it, and dozens of martyrs beneath it. We continue searching for remains under the debris. A gruesome massacre, as you can see, with the limbs of women, children, the elderly, and youth. This house sheltered displaced people, around ten families totaling over eighty individuals. They were forced out of the Safatawi area after some of them were detained and later released. The Israeli army directed them to the Abu Alba family's house, where they thought they were safe. However, F-16 missiles struck them in the middle of the night without warning. These are Israel's targets. Children, women, and innocent youth. Israel's targets are civilians, distant from any resistance. We cannot say they were targeted due to any resistance presence. Innocent families are displaced and seeking refuge. We say, God is sufficient for us and he is the best disposer of affairs as our prayer against them. This is Majed Abu Alba, known to many working in the Ars transportation line and the Allenby Crossing. He is known to have no affiliations with any organizations and he opened his house to his neighbors and family after their homes were burned in the Safatawi area. Our message to the silent, unjust international community witnessing the killing of women, children, and the innocent is to take a stance against these heinous crimes. Where is the Arab, Islamic, and humanitarian conscience? We appeal to the entire world after 92 days of war. The occupation's series of atrocities in northern Gaza continues. This family fled from the Safatawi area to the Fallujah area in search of safety. However, Israeli occupation forces insist on stripping safety from all areas, leaving behind dozens of marchers and casualties. Wasn't that horrible? Wasn't that horrible? And so, uh, so... 
Israel uh, and the United States, uh, the warmongering, bloodthirsty Democrats, uh, they have really isolated us on the world stage, and it's, it's horrific scenes like that that go around the world uh, every single day. Uh, I showed you yes, the last video, the huge protest that was taking place in Yemen. Uh, they, are, they want war. They want war with Israel. Everybody wants war with Israel. And, of course, Russia and India met today on uh, uh, economic and other issues. It was a huge meeting. Uh, a lot of things came out of it, but it was a closed-door meeting, so we don't really have many details. But just the fact that Russia and India are cozying up and talking about uh, the uh, economics that are, are beneficial to both countries, I think that's very, very interesting. All right, let's get into a couple of bookmarks here. On the same theme, it took South Africa, the country that freed itself from apartheid, only about 30 years ago to be the one to go to the International Court of Justice and call out Israel for genocide. That was black in the empire. I, I, I just thought, I found that tweet and I was like, or tweet that, that post on X, and I thought, man, he's, he's talking about my video. What do you know? Roseanne Miller. This is, uh, is going to be wild. Reminder, the war in Gaza has nothing to do with Hamas. Israel is conducting ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian population for their land. The almost 25,000 deaths targeted infrastructure for, for the survival by airstrike. The siege on water, food, and fuel is genocide. March on Washington for Gaza in coming soon, January 13th at 1 p.m. There you go. This is great. <laughs> this is just fun. Spotted in Florida. Best dog grooming ad ever. And this is an actual big sign. It's a bulletin board up on the highway. It says, we groom dogs. Not your kids. <laughs> anyway, I, I, it was, that's Tim Young. Uh, and he posted that on, on X. I, I, I just loved it. Greg Abbott, Biden, not Texas, is the cause for this crisis in cities across our nation. Instead of a baseless lawsuit against Texas migrant transportation mission, uh, Mayor Adams should call on Biden to secure the border. If you didn't know, Mayor Adams is is blaming Texas for uh, the migrant crisis that's taking place in the sanctuary Democrat city of New York. Uh, breaking. China has imposed sanctions on the United States. Well, I guess what's good for the goose is good for the gander. China retaliates against five U.S. defense companies for new arms sales to Taiwan, freezing assets. Oh, wow, imagine that. Freezing assets. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. We froze Russian assets, and now we're stealing the Russian money. I imagine countries like China and Russia are going to start stealing U.S. money before too long, don't you think? I think it's good for the goose. We urge the United States to start arming Taiwan and stop targeting China with illegal unilateral sanctions. And then it goes on from there. Simplicius the Thinker. Shocking discovery by German Commission visiting Leopard Repair Plant. German tanks were created for exercises and parades, not for real combat. <laughs> And then it goes on from there to talk about how shitty the, the German tanks are. Uh, this is Canadian prepper. North Korea cabinet warned on Sunday there will be an immediate military strike on West as tensions reach all-time high. So that's what I was talking about with North Korea. And let's continue to read this. So Ken jong Young said in a warning, I make myself clear once again that the safety catch of trigger of the Korean people Korean People's Army, KPA, has already been slipped. As already declared, the KPA will launch an immediate military strike if enemy makes even a slight provocation. So that's heating up over there. Simplicius the Thinker, this is, uh, th boy, this is sick. <laughs> the woman who complained on video about being stranded in West Ukraine with her children when her husband was forcibly pulled from the car and kidnapped by commissaires or Ukrainian... Uh, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, uh, I guess commissaires, that they pull them out of cars, they pull them out of uh, health clubs, and they send them to the front lines to die, uh, and, and is now been captured by the SBU forces, and she was forced to apologize uh, publicly on TV. That is sick. That is sick. So that's it for today's video. Peace out. Stay free. <laughs> Красавчик, давай, 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 давай. 
Красавчик. Красавчик, четко. Метис, все 200, все 200. 